It's my great honor and privilege to welcome you on behalf of Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, SCOS Kashmir, and University of Kashmir for gracing the inaugural function of the two-day conference on recent advances in biomedical sciences and regenerative medicine. We are deeply indebted to Honorable Advisor Sri Raju Rai Bhatnagarji for accepting our invitation and for his august presence in the inaugural function. Sir, we feel greatly honored by your esteemed presence today and thank you for extending us this privilege. We are honored to have the gracious presence of Honorable Vice Chancellor, Skos Kashmir, Professor Nazir Ahmed Ganai, Dean Academics Affairs, University of Kashmir, Professor Farooq Masoodi, Director, Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine, Dr. D. Sidney Wasaredi, and all the deans and faculty members with us this morning. Thank you for gracing the, the inaugural function. I also welcome all the honored guests, deans of various faculties, directors, heads of various departments, faculty members, and students present here today in the morning. The conference theme, Biomedical Sciences and Regenerative Medicine, is of immense significance to public health as well as to the research community. Biomedical research is vital for any society and it is from such research that therapeutic interventions and innovations emerge that contribute to our economic and social development. The larger goal of this multi-institutional conference, as we will hear more from Professor Ashok Kumar, is to foster inter-university interactions, collaborative scientific innovations and discoveries. I believe if we pool our resources and intellect, we shall be able to develop better scientific infrastructure, and we will have answers and solutions to a lot of problems that are prevalent in the region, ranging from agriculture to biomedical sciences to climate change. Together, we can achieve more and shall be able to do impactful research with societal implications. And we will be able to propel the regional advancement of science and technology. We are confident that this event will provide ample opportunities for fruitful discussions, as well as possibilities to initiate new scientific collaborations and joint projects among researchers from various institutions. These collaborations would be vital for developing a rich and competitive research ecosystem in the region and would help in developing strategies to tackle biomedical problems prevalent in the country and JK in particular. I wish all the participants a fruitful and scientifically enlightening conference. Thank you very much. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to welcome you all to this international conference on recent advances on biomedical science and regenerative medicine, uh, acclaimed as Arabsum 2022. Uh, being an alumnus uh, of University of Kashmir and uh, my personal belonging uh, to the state uh, of the valley, it gives me special uh, feeling to be able to host the international conference as a collaborative effort between IIT Kanpur SCOS Kashmir and University of Kashmir. So at IIT Kanpur actually, the main purpose was actually and how the genesis of this conference started actually, that how uh, you know the three groups actually at the helm of the biomedical sciences and particularly actually in the area of the regenerative medicine actually, can converge their expertise in different areas and come up with a sort of you know uh, health solutions actually in the advanced development actually. That is basically the genesis actually. And in that uh, you know, effort at IIT Kanpur, uh, we focus at developing engineering based healthcare solutions uh, by investing our efforts into new generation technologies and exploiting them to create solution towards the basic uh, health necessities. Where uh, with a strong base of agriculture and your veterinary research and teaching at SCOST, uh, Kashmir, with focus on technology development uh, and for the translation application and high level of fundamental research. And teaching in biodomain and interdisciplinary subjects of University of Kashmir, it makes the uh, perfect platform for such a multidisciplinary conference, actually. 
I believe uh, this is one of the unique combination actually of uh, the theme of the conference actually having the agriculture sciences, veterinary sciences, basic biological sciences actually and the engineering sciences collaborate actually with the application and particularly in the area of biomedical sciences actually. I think that was a sort of our interest actually to have this convergence actually at one platform. And uh, it, it's all the sort of I can say thanks to both cost and also University of Kashmir actually they agreed to this concept actually and we are together on these two days here. At the very outset I would like to express thanks to the organizers for inviting me to this session. And secondly I owe gratitude and thanks to the institute as a whole. By institute I mean majority of the people who are sitting here in the audience, be it my colleagues, my class fellows, or the students. Their contribution in my academic and intellectual upbringing is significant. I owe this gratitude to all of you. As my colleague Dr. Altaf said in the beginning, the importance of collaborations. I would like to add, we can have better understanding of the problems. We can critically study different dimensions of the problems once we join hands with each other, once we collaborate with each other. Not only that, we can have better utilization of the infrastructure as well. We have seen in many of the research institutions, in many of the universities, infrastructure which we generate after a great struggle, it's not being utilized to its optimum level. I think collaborations between institutions that can help us in a significant manner to have optimum utilization of the infrastructure. Keeping that thing into consideration, I think it's a good sign that the two universities have joined hands, not only the two universities here in this region, but we see collaboration between IIT, Triple IM Jammu, and many other institutions. And secondly, Honorable Vice, Honorable Vice Chancellor, as well as uh, our Honorable Advisor, are aware of the fact about the research output of the two universities. Particularly in different areas, the research output of various institutions of this region is significant, not only significant, but comparable with many of the good institutions of the world. Here, we can say with confidence that the organizers of these, the, this conference, SCOST Kashmir and Kashmir University, the research output, particularly in some areas like biosciences, it's comparable with research output of many good universities of the world. I think we have to, we need to upgrade we have to tailor our programs which are strictly in accordance with our requirements, with the requirements of the society. A lot of developments have taken place in this biomedical science, biomedical engineering. I see if we just try to trace the history of biomedical science, it goes back to the days of uh, pasture, coach, and so on. And after that, many significant developments did take place. I think the discovery of Watson and Crick's model of double helix was a turning point in whole biosciences, particularly in biomedical sciences. I'm sure a lot of deliberations, fruitful deliberations will take place during the conference, but one thing I would like to point out here, while conducting any research, while framing any research program, we have to see different dimensions of those programs. We have to keep all those dimensions into consideration, be it social dimension of our projects, be it legal dimension of our projects, be it technical and scientific dimension of those projects. Just to, quote, to, to substantiate my point, I would like to quote a few examples. Say, human genome project. We celebrated, people all over the world celebrated this completion of human genome project probably 10 years back. But has this human genome project significantly solved the problems of many patients who are suffering from genetic disorders? Have we been in a position to solve all those problems? Probably not. 
So diagnostics on one side, we have advanced. We have made significant improvements in those areas. But then corrective measures, are we in a position to make corrections in those genetic defects, in those disorders? I think this gap between the predictive measures and the corrective measures, this need to be narrowed down or this need to be eliminated. And then once we are ready with those tools, say diagnostic tools, predictive, we can just well in advance, we can make predictions that I am suffering from this genetic disorder or say after 10 years of my, this putting in 10 years of my life or 20 years, God forbid, this genetic defect may surface up. But once we are with the diagnostic tools, so 20 years back or 30 years, but there are so many examples, different types of those syndromes, we can diagnose them at an earlier stage. But once that diagnosis is at an earlier stage, through what sort of psychological that trauma the person will pass. Of course, the disease will appear after 20 years or 30 years, but I'll start that psychological uh, problems, I'll start right from the day those disorders are detected. I think these dimensions our researchers have to analyze, have to criti uh, critically analyze those things. And I'm sure uh, these uh, things will be uh, delivered here. And then about uh, legal dimensions of different uh, policies, particularly in these biomedical uh, research. I think some session or some uh, lectures need to be arranged for that. What are different, uh, is our legislation sufficient to take care of these problems? And we are duty bound and morally we are bound to provide our agencies, government agencies, the feedback about all those uh, legislative measures which are in vogue, whether they need modifications or whether they, they need changes. So I once again thank all of you for giving me, me an opportunity to be with you. Today's conference is yet another reflection of the multidisciplinary and the inter-institutional approach of our march towards venturing into new endeavors. As an agriculture university talking about the regenerative medicine seems to be a, an unnatural combination of a cause and effect, but surprisingly it's not. I personally compliment the scientists from Scotch Kashmir, the University of Kashmir, and the IIT Kanpur, who together have thought it very appropriate to hold this brainstorming session of, uh, on this personalized medicine as is driven by regenerative and stem cell therapies, and which is going to challenge the notion of one size fits all, which it is not. This new system of medicine understands the mystery of nature that we all 8 billion people on this planet are very different and unique from each other. So also must be the approach towards detecting, diagnosing, training and preventing the diseases. World is fast moving towards that individualized are the precision based on medicine and the surgeries. Towards this goal, man has discovered that mystery of decoding the complex code of life uh, of 3.2 billion letters. If which we write, it will take us more than 500 books, each of 500 pages. That is what uh, Masuji Sai was just you know, mentioning about. Next, the man started hunting for those individual variations amongst us in the form of those mutations, which either make us very special to withstand the onslaughts of the nature, just as we have faced the COVID-19 situation. Many of those who are susceptible to COVID, they have just gone, but many of those who have survived the COVID is because they have some of those inherent uh, you know, tolerances uh, to this such kind of disease and uh, everything is inherited. Or otherwise, are so, are many of us are susceptible because of our genetic makeup that we succumb to those very, very small pressures of the nature. So also has the man hunted for those superior parts, we call the stem cells, which are hidden one in millions of cells in our tissues. And once identified and characterized, these stem cells provide us a mechanism to cure those diseases which is otherwise 
you know, very difficult. Even, even, even the kind of the tissues, the nervous tissues, you know, which does not regenerate too much. But God has kept those superior parts hidden in our tissues, and it is we who have to just hunt for those cells. It seems to be a complex science, and I'm proud to share that with the audience and with our chief guests here, that one of our alumnus of this university is heading the Stem Cell Research Institute in Harvard School of Medicine. He is Dr. Khalid Shah. Just as our honorable lieutenant governor is attracting foreign investors to Kashmir for job and wealth creation, so are we envisaging to make Kashmir as the next hub, hub of the educational tourism like Bangalore, the Pune, or even the Dhaka. It is indeed a privilege to be here among all of you in this center of excellence. It is very gratifying to know the excellent work that is being done by this university, not only in terms of practical contributions as far as the problems of this UT are concerned, but also nationally and internationally in terms of the research and also the useful applications that are coming out of it. It is indeed Gratifying to know that over 250 participants would be taking part in this conference. It is good to see that we are working in partnerships and collaboration. We need to strengthen the interface between the academia, the research institutions, the practitioners, the industry, and the government. Then we would be able to actually translate research into products, into benefits for our citizens at large. It is also gratifying to know that this university has made an immense contribution as far as agri-education is concerned, and also is taking timely and great strides in implementing the new education policy. I would also like to congratulate all the participants who have come here and would be taking part in this conference. I would also like to use this opportunity to bring to the notice, especially of the outside delegates, that JNK is on an accelerated path of growth and development. I would say that today it is a sunrise region, and there is immense potential, and it is a land of opportunity. I would also like to apprise you that apart from the field of education, higher education, medical education, there has been a vast expansion in the facilities that are available in the UT. We are having two aims which are coming up. We have an IM, we have an IIT. We have recently opened seven new medical colleges and it is our endeavor to make JNK one of the best destinations as far as higher education is concerned. In terms of infrastructure also, if we were to look at the air infrastructure, the airports have been upgraded. If we were to look at the highways and the road infrastructure, nearly one lakh crores is being invested in giving it the best possible highway infrastructure in the country. We are going to be soon connected by rail. By next year, JNK will be connected to almost all parts of the country through the rail network. And I would also like to mention to you that in front of all infrastructure, be it power, be it water supply, in every aspect, we plan that in the next 
three years, we should become self-sufficient. There has also been an effort to bring everything to the common man, to have citizenship oversight of most issues, to have transparency and accountability for all government actions, and in that endeavor, we have put everything in the public space for the citizens to look at and to be able to give their feedback. We are promoting the rule of law. We are also making all efforts that this beautiful paradise develops and becomes one of the most developed regions of this country. We also welcome all the delegates who have come from outside. And as you are all aware, this is one of the best tourist destinations that you would find anywhere in the world. We are all aware that today the future lies in research and development and in science and technology. The pace of growth is so fast that anybody who even tries to predict what is going to happen in the next three years often finds himself outdated. Today, the scientific discoveries, and especially in this area, there is immense potential, the areas that you are going to discuss. And there are immense applications that could really change the whole ecosystem of medicine, of vaccines, of the kind of support that we can provide both to mankind as well as to the animal kingdom. With these words, I would like to congratulate all of you who are here, especially the organizers, the VC of this university, University of Kashmir, IIT Kanpur, and uh, I wish you all very, very meaningful and fruitful discussions. All the best. Thank you.